Trigonometric functions, graph sine and cosine, what are they? Trigonometric functions are functions related to their angle, including sine, cosine, and tangent, and their reciprocals, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Why? Helps to measure curved spaces by using triangles. Interesting fact, sloths have a four-part stomach that very slowly digests the tough leaves they eat. It can sometimes take up to a month for them to digest a meal. Now, let's take a look at our model and see how the numbers affect the graph depending on where the number is. First, let's look at A, or the amplitude. The amplitude is the height of the middle point to either the peak or trough. Or if you prefer, the distance from the highest point to the lowest point and divide that by 2. Now, it might be a little easier to find the amplitude at the minimum or an extrema. Next is B, or the period. The period is one complete cycle. The best bet is to find the period from one peak to another peak, or one trough to another trough. Here, our period is the distance from one trough to another trough, but it encompasses all these points in between. Or we can find the period at these two points, which are in the middle of the graph, and the period encompasses all these points. Remember, the period is one complete cycle. Next is C, or the phase shift. The phase shift is how far the function moves horizontally. Let's say our function moves here. The best bet to find the distance of the phase shift is at one extrema to another, but it can be found somewhere else as well. Oh, that means the amplitude and the period also shifts. Now let's talk about the last number, which is D, or the vertical shift. The vertical shift is how far the function moves up or down. Let's say our function moves here. The best bet to find the distance of the vertical shift is at one extrema to another, but it can be found somewhere else as well. Oh, that means the amplitude and the period also shifts. And that is how the different numbers affect the graph of any sine or cosine function. Now, let's take a look at some theorems for sine and cosine graphs. We have theorem on amplitudes and periods. If y is equal to a times sine of b of x, or y is equal to a times cosine of b of x, for non-zero real numbers a and b, then the graph has amplitude, which is absolute value of a, and period, which is 2 pi over absolute value of b. The next theorem is the theorem on amplitudes, periods, and phase shifts. If y is equal to a times sine of bx plus c plus d, or y is equal to a times cosine of bx plus c plus d, for non-zero real numbers a and b, then 1. The amplitude is the absolute value of a, the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of b, and the phase shift is negative c over b. And 2, an interval containing exactly one cycle can be found by solving the inequality 0 less than or equal to bx plus c less than or equal to 2 pi. Now we've seen the models, we've seen the math. Let's see in action by taking a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example 1. Let's read the steps. Step 1, draw. Step 2, label your parts. Step 3, graph. Step 4, check. And now, let's read the question. Find the amplitude and the period and sketch the graph of y is equal to 2 sine of 3x. Let's write down the general formula for sine to help us out. Let's write down the given equation y is equal to 2 sine of 3x underneath. Using the general equation a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, c is equal to 0, and d is equal to 0. Let's write down what we need to find, the amplitude and the period. Let's find the amplitude. Remember, the amplitude is the absolute value of a. We need the absolute value because the amplitude is a distance, and distances are positive. The same goes with the period. Let's substitute 2 for a. So now we have the absolute value of 2, which is 2. Now, let's find the period. Remember, the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Let's substitute 3 for b. So now we have 2 pi over the absolute value of 3, which is 2 pi over 3. Now we found the amplitude and the period. Before we sketch the graph, let's convert that 2 pi over 3 to a decimal, so we have a better understanding what that number is. What does that 2.09 represent? one cycle. Let's use the compound equality 0 less than or equal to bx plus c less than or equal to 2 pi 
to find the best place to start the cycle on the graph. Now let's substitute 3 for b. Since z is 0, we don't need to write that. Let's solve for x by dividing each section by 3. So we have less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi over 3. We found the best place to start the cycle. Let's put two dots, one for 0 and one for 2 pi over 3, to represent one cycle on the graph. Let's cut the distance of the cycle in half. Depending if we have sine or cosine, this new dot could represent the x value of the extrema or where it crosses the x-axis. Now let's cut these two new distances in half. Depending if we have sine or cosine, these two new dots could represent the x value of the extrema or where it crosses the x-axis. Where do you think the graph will cross the x-axis? Through the middle dot or through the red dots? Since we have a sine function, we start at the origin, because sine of 0 is 0. Which means the first red dot can be moved up two spaces to represent our maximum, and the second red dot can be moved down two spaces to represent our minimum. Where did the 2 come from? That is our a value, or our amplitude. And now, let's get rid of the excess dots, and we're left with these. Let's connect the dots so we can see how one complete cycle looks like. Let's extrapolate our graph. And this is the graph of y is equal to 2 sine of 3x. Now, let's check. First, let's change our graph to y is equal to sine of x. Now, let's graph y is equal to 2 sine of x. The amplitude increased, so we have a vertical stretch. But the period remained the same. Now, let's graph y is equal to 2 sine of 3x. This time, the amplitude stayed the same, but our period shrunk, so we have a horizontal shrink. And there we have it. That is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Find the amplitude, the period, and the phase and vertical shift, and sketch the graph of y is equal to 3 cosine of 2 theta plus 7 fifths plus 1. Now, let's write the given equation so we can show our work. Using the given equation, what is A? What is B? What is C? What is D? That's right, A is 3, B is 2, C is 7 fifths, and D is 1. Now, let's write down what we need to find. The amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. Let's find the amplitude. Remember, the amplitude is the absolute value of A. We need the absolute value because the amplitude is a distance, and distances are positive. The same goes with the period, phase shift, and vertical shift. Let's substitute 3 for A. So now we have the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Now, let's find the period. Remember, the period is 2 pi, or the absolute value of B. Let's substitute 2 for B. So now we have 2 pi, or the absolute value of 2 which is pi. Now, let's find the phase shift. Remember, the phase shift is negative c over b. Let's substitute 7 fifths for c and 2 for b. So now we have negative 7 fifths divided by 2, which is negative 7 tenths. Since we have a negative, it is understood that the graph shifts to the left. You can keep the negative or write out to the left. It is up to you. Now, let's find the vertical shift. Since the function has a plus 1 at the end, our graph shifts 1 up. Now, we found the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. We can use that information to rewrite our function so we can see the phase shift. If we factor out a 2 inside the parentheses, we get y is equal to 3 times cosine of 2 times the quantity of theta plus 7 tenths plus 1. Now, let's find the best place to start the cycle on the graph by using the compound equality 0 less than or equal to b theta plus c less than or equal to 2 pi. Let's substitute 2 for b and 7 fifths for c. So now we have 0 less than or equal to 2 theta plus 7 fifths less than or equal to 2 pi. Let's solve for theta by subtracting 7 fifths in each section. So we have negative 7 fifths less than or equal to 2 theta less than or equal to 2 pi minus 7 fifths. Let's divide each section by 2, so we have negative 7 tenths 
less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi minus 7 tenths. We found the best place to start the cycle. Let's put the two dots, one for negative 7 tenths and one for pi minus 7 tenths to represent one cycle on the graph. Let's cut the distance of the cycle in half. Depending if we have sine or cosine, this new dot could represent the x value of the extrema or where it crosses the x-axis. Now, let's cut these two distances in half. Depending if we have sine or cosine, these two new dots could represent the x value of the extrema or where it crosses the x-axis. Where do you think our graph will cross the x-axis? Through the middle dot or through the red dots? Since we have a cosine function, we start above the origin on the y-axis because cosine of zero is one, which means the outside dots can be moved up three spaces to represent our maximums. And the middle dot can be moved down three spaces to represent our minimum. Where did the three come from? That is our a value or the amplitude. Now let's get rid of the excess dots and we're left with these. Let's connect the dots so we can see how one complete cycle looks like. So we have one more step to do. Do you know what it is? We need to move our graph up one. Let's get rid of the excess graph. Let's extrapolate our graph. And this is the graph of y is equal to three cosine of two theta plus seven fifths plus one. Now let's check. First, let's change our graph to y is equal to cosine theta. Now, let's graph y is equal to three cosine theta. The amplitude increased, so we have a vertical stretch, but the period remained the same. Now, let's graph y is equal to three cosine of two theta. This time, the amplitude stayed the same, but our period shrunk, so we have a horizontal shrink. Let's get rid of the first two graphs, since we have two more graphs to show. Now, let's graph y is equal to three cosine of two theta plus seven fifths. Is the graph going to the left or to the right of y is equal to three cosine of two theta? To the left. Now, let's graph y is equal to three cosine of two theta plus seven fifths plus one. Is the graph going up or down from y is equal to three cosine of two theta plus seven fifths? Up. And there we have it. That is example two. Now it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question. And I'll show you the results in three, two, and one. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there's always tomorrow.